Okay, I'll start off by saying that Jonathan Nelson actually has a Southampton's futures to go down. So that gives every Saints fan the moral or morale boosting that he never wins. So that means that they must be winning all of their games and staying up. But this time, I think, uh, Jonathan Nelson, you are actually going to win. Southampton at plus 180, host Fulham at plus 150. It's one of them games where it's <laughs> you've just got to throw everything at it and just see where you are after 95 minutes. So the over two and a half is at plus 100. Looks too big, to be honest, because Fulham could score three. Southampton could score three. The draw's at plus 235. Uh, Stinch, I, I, don't, I just don't see how this game is mundane and I think we see goals and I think we see goals from both parties yeah for me this is such an easy bet to make in taking the overs at plus 100 I expected I thought overs might be favorite or at worst 50 50 so the fact it's like a fairly decent outsider very very easy bet for me to make when we've got the the king of the over two and a half goals in the Premier League in, in Fulham 66 percent of their games have gone overs this season and we've alluded to the fact that there might be teams on the beach um, in the previous weeks, but Fulham is seemingly not one of those teams on the beach, and that's despite the fact they're missing Mitrovic as well, and that might be one of the reasons why the price on overs is holding. But, yeah, very, very happy to take uh, overs. We, we know post-World Cup Fulham's games were a bit turgid and weren't very goal-heavy, but recently seven of the last ten have gone Overs and they're coming against a, a team that, as you say, Flash, have to win. There's no, nothing that they need. I think the eight points adrift now of safety, so they, they need to throw everything at it. And they're like a sieve at the back, uh, conceded at least two goals in five of the last six games. And uh, we know Fulham themselves have been quite lucky, I would say, uh, defensively this season. They should have conceded a lot more goals than they have. Their matches are averaging 2.83 goals per game, but expected goals has it up at 3.26. So I'm confident that between now and the end of the season, we'll see more goals in Fulham matches than the odds suggest. Uh, when these two, te two teams met on uh, New Year's Eve, it finished 2-1 as well. So, yep, absolutely very happy to back overs here, as I don't consider Fulham to be on the beach, and they seem to still be playing. They're almost playing with more freedom, I would say, Fulham, knowing that they're safe and just enjoying themselves. Yep, there's a uh, there's a, quite a connection between Southampton and Fulham. Most of Southampton fans' favourite away game is Fulham. It's just one straight road up the M3. In in you go. Also, Stuart Gray, obviously been associated with Southampton for many many years. Backroom staff at Fulham. Harrison Reed, centre midfield, who's done so so well coming through the uh, leagues with Fulham. He started in the academy at Southampton. What about Marco here? Both these sides possibly scoring two because you're getting plus 165 for a desperado Southampton. If you're going to live by the sword, you die by the sword. So they've got to go forward. And Fulham at plus 140 against a side who don't really keep clean sheets. It looks like a free hit that one of them's going to score two. Yeah, it's, it's a nice price uh, on either of them, really. Uh, just yeah. pick your poison. But I, I've just kind of combined the two and sort of taken Stinch's selection on to the next level and just backed over to enough goals and BTTS at, at plus 125. So, mm. you know, one team will need to score at least twice and, and therefore I get paid at, at plus 125. So it's hard to envisage uh, clean sheets in this game. Uh, Saints, I think the players know that they're going down, judging by how they kind of slumped off uh, after the game against Forest on, on Monday. Uh, but I think they'll give it a good go regardless because they're a young squad and I think there's futures to be played for here, not just with Southampton, but there'll be an eagerness to prove that they can play at this level. I actually thought their performance at Forest on Monday was, was pretty good, actually. Very positive. They won the shot count 19-9, generated 2.45 non-penalty expected goals. Now, only Man United have bettered that total at the City ground this season. So quite impressive, really. And I think whilst results haven't always gone their way because they are defensively pretty disastrous going forward they've yeah. you know they gave newcastle concerns before sort of game state took over there and they had to try and defend their lead at the emirates they were dangerous and very front foot and very positive um they scored against man city here not long ago they scored three goals here against spurs uh, as well so maybe perhaps the sort of predicament that they're in will kind of play play to their favor really loosen them up a little bit at st mary's and allow them to play without pressure and be a bit more proactive i'm not sure it's just a sort of psychological um a conclusion i've come to really and, and, and as for fulham yeah stinch said they're not on the beach they're definitely not um if you watch the games against man city and liverpool they may have lost those fixtures but they're very unfortunate on both occasions 
And then they took out all their anger on Leicester, really, on, on Monday as well. Very impressive. Relentless, really, in that first hour. Just completely shredded them. Loads of chances. Looked really good. And now they get Mitrovic as well, back this weekend as well, which is just a, an extra carrot for them. They've already beaten Everton and Leeds lately, 3-1 and 2-1. And their record against the bottom five reads eight wins, one draw, zero defeats. And they've scored twice or more in seven of those nine games. So that plus 140 doesn't look too bad on Fulham when you think about it, really considering you, don't, you just don't know where Saints' heads are at, particularly if they fall behind. Um, but anyway, Overs has landed in seven of Fulham's last ten, BTTS six of those, six of their nine games against the bottom five have seen Overs and BTTS. Fulham themselves are without, unclean, without a clean sheet in 11, and Saints have uh, managed just one clean sheet at home all season, so you can see where their problems are at. But uh, just a, a theme that we'll probably talk about in the next couple of weeks, really, but um, it's not just the Premier League, really, this, this occurs to, but we're in the month of May now, the final month of the season, and it's kind of tradition that uh, it's the highest scoring month for all major football leagues. If you exclude COVID times, since 2014-15, the Premier League averages 2.95 goals per game in May, which is quite a decent upturn uh, on sort of uh, season-long averages. So, you know, I think this will be a, a similar sort of a scenario here. And look, we've only had 15 games so far this month, but we've seen 47 goals in the Premier League, which is an average of 3.13. So I agree with Stinch. I can't really understand or work out why uh, under two and a half goals is the favourite here. Surely, surely it should be flip-flops. So more than happy to get involved. I bet you are. Uh, nice to see more new names in the chat because Jordan Figuera says Fulham at plus 140 to be over one and a half is unreal. I'm going to make an official ad. So obviously I hope to maybe see that at the back end of the show when we do the best bets. But I think Southampton scored twice um, at plus 165. I think uh, they could lose 5-2. But I just believe that they're going to actually give it a go. And if they are going to go down, they're going to go down at least putting some sort of smile. And I will go as far as this. If they keep the nucleus of this young, talented squad together, they come straight back up. Because there's nothing in the championship that I think scares any of the sides that will potentially go through that trapdoor. So Southampton, official pick will be that they score over 1.5 goals, uh, plus 165 miles too big. And I'm not saying they're going to win the game. Let's have a look at the uh, original official picks from the boys. Both teams to score an over 2.5 for Marco here at plus 125. Not complicating it for Stinch. Over 2.5 at plus 100. So there's pluses right across the board. And uh, we'll look forward to the best bets graphic at the end. 